if we don't do this on a global scale, if we don't do it in a very rapid time frame, and if we don't really do it comprehensively with 70% reductions, I think you will begin to see the unraveling of organized civilization. Global warming is a heavily discussed issue that many will argue saying it is happening at an alarming rate. While some out there believe that global warming is happening naturally, however most scientists believe that global warming is heavily increasing due to our influence on the world. And of course, because of this, many governments are attempting to switch to renewable energy sources to make their countries more green. And because of that, we ask the question, is there a way to reverse global warming or are we simply past the point of no return. So welcome to FTD Facts everybody, my name is Dave Wapla. Now here on the channel we normally talk about people, cultures, and places from all around the world. And this video, yeah, we're not really talking about people and cultures, we're talking about, you know, global warming. And as a matter of fact, we're talking about something very specific because for me, I've always wondered what would happen if we put a giant ice cube or maybe even liquid nitrogen into the ocean, would that stop global warming from happening? Because scientists around the world do have a theory that that possibly by the year 2050, one in 10 species that are currently on the planet will become extinct. But is there a way to reverse it? Well, today here we look at the idea of using liquid nitrogen to stop the effects of the heat building up on our planet. Now before we get in this video guys, I wanna know what are your ideas to stop global warming? Let us know down there. Also, this video is brought to you by Grammarly. I'm gonna get into that at the end of this video because we're giving you the facts first. All right, let's get started. So firstly, we need to look at liquid nitrogen. Because what is liquid nitrogen? Okay, we've seen that James Bond movie, Goldeneye, where Boris goes, I am invincible, and then he gets blown liquid nitrogen all over him, and he freezes immediately, falls over, and smashes. But what is it? Yes, I am invincible! Well, first of all, liquid nitrogen is a cryogen known as LN2, and it is simply nitrogen in liquid form. Oh yeah, I guess that really does make a lot of sense. But wait, what is nitrogen? So nitrogen is basically an element with the atomic number seven, and it is a tasteless, colorless gas that is located in 78 to 79% of the atmosphere all on the planet. And the rest of it is majorly oxygen with about 1% other stuff. Literally, it's called other stuff. And although this is really meant for another video, to make liquid nitrogen, you basically have to distill the air, making it boil at negative 195.8 degrees Celsius. Wait, what? You get to burn? Wait, what? You have to boil something at negative degree? That doesn't make any sense. Oh well, like I said, probably for another video. Now, liquid nitrogen sits anywhere below negative 320.44 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, you really don't want that stuff on your skin because it's just not going to be good. Realistically, to be honest, if you dropped only a little bit of liquid nitrogen on your face or splashed it in your face, it wouldn't do much because liquid nitrogen would pretty much bounce right off of your skin due to an effect called the Leyden's Frost Effect. However, if you were to dump yourself into a bucket of liquid nitrogen or hold it in your hand, you would ultimately get frostbite and damage your skin. Oh man, that kind of actually hurt. So you can see it's turned my skin completely white. As it warms back up though, it starts to fade. So we know it's cold and it has to be made by man. But one thing that is good about it is it is not expensive to produce. To produce liquid nitrogen, it costs about 50 cents a gallon if you buy it in bulk. And a gallon of this stuff weighs a little under seven pounds. Sometimes you can hear of liquid nitrogen being used to make ice cream, freeze alcohol, and sometimes bartenders put it on the tops of drinks to make them look really cool. But the thing is, liquid nitrogen, according to Peter Barharm, who is a scientist at the University of Bristol's School of Physics, states that liquid nitrogen can be used for food prep but should never actually ever be consumed because it's like the opposite of boiling water. You just don't want to drink boiling water. It's just going to kill you on the inside. And even John Emsley of the Royal Society of Chemistry states that if you drank a teaspoon or even a few drops of liquid nitrogen, your stomach would freeze instantly and become as brittle as glass. So if you like pushed on your belly, it would probably shatter. But even if it did, if you manage to get it inside your system, liquid nitrogen and nitrogen heats up really quickly, so it might even make your stomach explode because of the amount of gas that's expanding. You can see just how big this is getting right now. It's getting very tight, I think it's gonna explode. 
But okay, what would happen if we put liquid nitrogen in the water, for example, right? Simply, if you dumped liquid nitrogen into a pool of water, it would create a huge white cloud as soon as the liquid nitrogen hit the water. And scientists have figured out to freeze simply 1,000 cubed feet of water, you would need three tons of liquid nitrogen. That is a lot. Ooh, oh my goodness! Wow! Look at this cloud! This is insane! And given the weight and the conversion of that three tons, it would cost a little under $500 for three tons of liquid nitrogen. And to be honest, even if we had the amount of liquid nitrogen being capable of cooling down the Atlantic or the Arctic Ocean, we would need every single ship probably known to man just to carry this stuff up there. And on top of that, one of the problems is, is that when water is struck by liquid nitrogen, although the water may not freeze, most of the oxygen around the water will shoot away, and this will cause any animals or human beings around the area to immediately suffocate because they are having no oxygen in their system. So therefore, we'd have a lot of dead guys and ships. Yes, we could probably drop it from planes, but you know. Okay, so say we decided not to put the liquid nitrogen in the water, but we instead put it in the soil. Well, after years of research, the National Science Foundation has discovered that putting nitrogen in the soil of the hardwood forests of North America actually makes carbon dioxide become trapped. And when it comes to this study, they found out that when you introduce liquid nitrogen into the soil, one fascinating thing is it actually made the trees grow more. And of course, that would help combat the problem, right? Although pumping nitrogen into the atmosphere or liquid nitrogen into the ground and contributing to excess nitrogen from dropping it into the water may seem like a good idea to make more trees, the problem is that this could lead to major biodiversity loss and possibly acidic rain in the water and even on the lands. And as well, too much nitrogen in the lakes can cause plankton to grow rapidly, thus resulting in them consuming more oxygen from the water, which would in turn kill more sea life. And the question unfortunately still remains, can liquid nitrogen do something positive for our atmosphere? And unfortunately, because of these uncertainties, scientists are just really on the fence of whether or not liquid nitrogen being put in the water or liquid nitrogen being put in the soil will do either good things for global warming or might make our environment and atmosphere and weather even worse. Oh my God. <laughs> Here comes the water. Although sometimes things might look good on paper, it can be a very dangerous thing when modifying our atmosphere. And for me, I look at it this way. It's like that really hot bartender girl that stays out till four o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning drinking after her shift. Sure, she might be beautiful. Sure, she might be really attractive and down to earth, but you just might think it might not work, right? But that wraps up this episode, and before you guys get out of here, check out Grammarly.com. These guys are a really good sponsor to us, and they really help improve your English. It's a free download, and trust me, you will benefit from it greatly. So check it out down there. Either way, guys, my name is Dave Wapple, and thanks for joining me here on FTD Facts. Like I said, this is a channel where we talk about people, cultures, and places from all around the world. So if you guys have a question that you want us to answer, or better yet, you want us to talk about a place that you know, a country that you are interested in, be sure to let us know down there in the comments below, because we take those requests from you guys. But either way, whatever your feelings are about global warming, whether you think it's happening or not, with many different variables such as our history, our influence, and the world's size, it can be hard to prove. And perhaps it's something that we shouldn't take for granted, as working towards going more green could not only benefit us, but the other life forms on this planet. For science has definitely proven that snow reflects up to 70% of the UV rays that are coming in from the sun, and with 10% of the land not including what's on the water covered in snow and glacial ice, the weather on this planet could be much different without it. Thanks for watching guys. Before I get out of here, check out our other videos because I'm pretty sure you guys would like to learn about other cultures and people from all around the world. As well, we are just getting into asking some of life's greatest questions. So if you got a question or if you want a country that we could talk about, let us know down there. Other than that, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.